This is the Brian No Show. The best news I didn't got all day, man. On NBC Sports Northwest, 620 Rip City Radio. All right, very pleased to welcome in Blazers head coach Terry Stotts joining us here on the Brian No Show. Coach, first off, great background. It almost looks like you should be wearing an ascot or have a fireplace in the background. You look more scholarly with just the wood. <laughs> it's great. Looks beautiful. Well, thanks. Uh, looks, uh, looks can be deceiving. <laughs> okay, so how about um, the last two games? An amazing contrast with your 500th career win and then last night. How do you put that into perspective? Well, I think it's a great example of the roller coaster that the NBA can be. Um, you know, my 500th win, uh, getting the tie break against Dallas, my former team. I mean, that was uh, a truly one of the more memorable moments in my time in Portland. And then one game later, one of the more memorable moments of my time in Portland with the 40 point loss and the largest home loss in Blazer history. So uh, definitely showed the highs and lows that the NBA can be. You know, I'll get to last night, but I don't want Friday night to get lost in the shuffle with the 500th win of your career. When you reflected back, and I'm sure you did at some point that night, what came to mind when you're thinking about your entire time and what went into not just you getting to 500 wins, but everybody else that was a part of that? Well, you know, for coaches, uh, when you when you get wins, it's it's based on uh, the players, your staff all throughout the years. And honestly, when you have a milestone, when you have a coaching milestone, I think it goes back to all the people that helped you get to there, whether it's in a certain season or within your career. So, you know, I go back to all, all my stops in Atlanta and Milwaukee, uh, even in Dallas, even though I wasn't a head coach there, but that helped get me the job here in Portland. And then all the people have been here in Portland. So uh, it is a time for reflection and uh, an appreciation for the people in your past and the people who are here currently. So take me back to last night after a loss like that, where it's the worst home loss in Blazers franchise history. Does your routine differ at all after a game like that, what you did last night? No, you really don't have a chance to change your routine. You know, you, uh, you watch the, you watch the game film, um, as much as you can, <laughs> as much as you can. Uh, but we got to move on. We got Brooklyn tomorrow. They're, one of the best, if not the best team in the league right now. So you can't dwell on it. Uh, you watch the game. Uh, you can't overreact to it. Uh, wins and losses, you can't overreact to. So we got, we'll got. we watch that, uh, start preparing for Brooklyn, and be ready to play them tomorrow night and move on. He's Coach Terry Stotts joining us here on the Brian No Show. It's only been a few games after the break, but since the All-Star break, what's the area specifically that pleases you the most right now about the squad? Uh, well, there's a, lot to, there's a lot to like. One is uh, I enjoy coming, coming to the gym every day. We've got a lot of good guys, professional. Um, they compete. Um, you know, so that, that makes your job enjoyable, that you, don't, uh, you enjoy being around the players and your staff. So uh, that, that's good. Uh, the fact that we've been able to – Main, I've said this before, that we were able to maintain uh, a top five, top ten offense, even with C.J. Nurk being out. Uh, that was that was good. Obviously, um, our defense is <laughs> continues to be a work in progress, to say the least. But, um, you know, we're competitive and uh, we're, we're a good place in the standings. But we got a lot we got a lot of games to win going forward. The flip side of it, after the break, what area displeases you the most? And if it's defense, for instance, what if you break that down even more, what, what specific area would it be? Well, I've said this before, but it's, it's consistency. Uh, the second game against New Orleans, uh, I don't know when that was, Monday or Wednesday, whenever that was, we played a, we played a good defensive game throughout against, even though their record doesn't show it, a very talented offensive team. So being consistent, what we were able to do in the fourth quarter against New Orleans in our first game, home game with them, uh, what we were able to do in the fourth quarter against Dallas is something that we're striving to do defensively throughout the game. Now, last night, um, I think it was a, 
you know, a little bit of a blip. They played, they played great. Uh, Luka Doncic had an outstanding game. Uh, they, the different, we, we didn't shoot the ball very, I think you just saw both ends of the spectrum of, you know, what, what can happen in a game. So, uh, but from a defensive standpoint, every team poses its own challenges, you know, with uh, Dallas Doncic is the problem and all their three point shooting. Uh, against New Orleans, they have different issues. When we come up uh, tomorrow night against Brooklyn, they have uh, an outstanding offense with great players. So each team has has its own challenges, and we just have to be up to the task for each one. He's Blazers head coach Terry Stotts here on the Brian No Show. I was thinking about this, Coach. If you could magically eliminate a question or a complaint from the media, you never had to hear it again. What do you think you would choose? Um, I don't know. That's tough because, honestly, uh, the media has a job to do. And sometimes they have to ask the obvious question. And the obvious question is, how do you get your defense better? So, um, you know, that is that has been a, a running theme. And it's a legit question. So I can't um, – I end up asking uh, – answering a lot of questions about our defense. But those are legit questions. Um you know, so I don't know. Uh, I, I, I've i always said the media has a tough job because they have to ask questions. They have to write a story. Uh, they have to do it every game. So I just like, um, you know, they don't necessarily know what I have to do. I don't necessarily what they know what they have to do and, and the rigors of their job. I think it's interesting, too, just visiting with you right now. It's so easy to tell that you're on to Brooklyn. It's almost like Bill Belichick saying we're on to Cincinnati, right? Like you're on Brooklyn and the media and fans, they might still be nitpicking and digesting the previous game. But I think the the difference in mindset is apparent oftentimes, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, Especially in the NBA. Now, I don't know football, you know, they got a week in between games. They got a, you know, and I don't know what their routine is, but for us, especially, the way the schedule is set up this year, you really cannot dwell on the previous game. We don't have a lot of practice time. Uh, the games are coming fast and furious. So you, you got to move on and prepare, learn from the last game, but you got to move on to the next game because it's coming. You know, I'm curious what you think about the MVP race. It's different this year with LeBron got injured on Saturday. He could be out for weeks, maybe a month. Uh, Joel Embiid has been nicked up. You have Luka and Jokic and, of course, Dame. So it's a unique race. What would it mean if Dame was able to emerge and win the award? I think it would be uh, an incredible accomplishment. And obviously he's in the discussion now uh, with over half the season in, uh, diver- deservedly so. But, uh, you know, what goes into the MVP is winning. And we've been able to maintain uh, our winning record, our position in the standings. And obviously we've been doing it on the shoulders of Damien. So uh, for him to do that, uh, to be the first MVP, I believe, since Bill Walton, uh, it would be an incredible feat. And if he did that, that means the team did really well as well. What would happen if, like, let's just say, you you know that Dame is incredibly valuable, but you thought that somebody else deserved it more. Like, I can't imagine you would put that into words. Would you just kind of Derek Jeter it and sidestep that one entirely? Uh, sidestep what? The, the question? Yeah, if they said, Coach, who do you think is the MVP this year? And deep down you thought, I don't know, it was Luka. I can't imagine you would say that, right? No, you always stick up for your guy, you know, whether it's making whether it's making the all star team or MVP or all defensive or whatever. uh, You always stick up for your guy. No doubt about that. Appreciate the honesty. Okay, I want to get your thoughts about this. Daryl Morey now with the 76ers. He's got a unique idea. He's suggesting that three pointers should be worth two and a half points. What do you think about that? I don't know about that. I do think that. that the three-point shot has to be um, kind of looked at and where the league wants to go with it. Obviously, it's really had an impact on the game. Uh, It's probably the most deciding factor in wins and losses in the league. And I I would think that in the next uh, few years that that the league will will analyze what what is the best for the game. But certainly the importance of the three-point shot – 
might ha- might be too large right now, and and it should be looked at. I, I don't have the answers. You know, I have some thoughts on it that I don't want to share, but I do think that um, that they should study it and see how it impacts the game. Yeah. Well, I won't ask you a follow up question if you don't if you don't want to share, share your blueprints on the you're three. Very, yeah, you're very observant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, CJ's return. You know what has that meant? not just for what he provides, but also Dame's workload possibly being lessened to a degree. Well, I think uh, Dame's minutes will be approximately the same. You know, he's going to play 35, 36, 37 minutes uh, with or without CJ. Uh, but as far as workload, having a having another ball handler out there, you know, with CJ not there over these 20 games, especially with the starting lineup, Dame is the primary, if not only, ball handler in that in that lineup and that lineup had played very well, but now having CJ who can play point uh, Dame can take some possessions off at the offensive end. Uh, I do think his workload will be less just because of what CB- CJ can do. How about Covington? He shot the three a lot better. Derek Jones actually for a stretch has shot the three a lot better. How does it help the offense when those guys are locked in from three? Well, just like the earlier discussion on the three-point shot, it's it's impactful. And, you know, I think Robert's probably shooting 40% over the last 20 games. He uh, got off to a slow start with us. Uh, and the fact that he his three-point shooting improved had a lot to do with the way we were able to keep our head above water with CJ and Nurk out. Uh, DJ, I think uh, he spends a lot of time on it. I think he's got a good stroke. It's a matter of confidence and reps. And I think you're seeing that. I don't know what he's shooting over the last – few games but um you know the scouting report on him is to leave him open so he's got time to line it up and when he has time he he can be a decent three-point shooter as he's shown I wanted to get your thoughts also on the Beavs heading to the Sweet 16 you had a few things to say about coach Wayne Tinkle last night can you just talk about your relationship with him and the Beavs getting to the Sweet 16 well first of all I don't know you probably have a tv monitor but the Ducks are probably playing right now, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm miss- So I'm missing the Ducks right now for you. <laughs> um, but um, no, Wayne Tinkle and I go back um, a ways. I, he was a player in uh, for the Tri-City Chinook in the CBA when I was an assistant coach in the CBA. Uh, he was Larry Kristoviak's uh, assistant at Montana. And I know Larry. I hired Larry. So I've met him there. So he and I have crossed paths a few times, and uh, he's just a really good guy. And uh, I'm happy for his success. And, uh, you know, and the Ducks, to be honest, uh, Kevin McKenna, the assistant coach, one of the assistant coaches for um, for the Ducks, he and I go back. Uh, we played against each other in the CBA back in the early 80s. So uh, I have a connection to both programs. I'm glad they're both doing well. Coach Tinkle has uh, personality, obviously. Do you have any funny stories from your, your days with Coach? Uh, not really. Uh, you know, it wasn't, um, you know, it's not like we were hanging out drinking beers or anything. But um, I just know when I, I've, like I said, our paths have crossed. Like in basketball, when you stay in basketball long enough, your paths cross. Now, it might be for play a game against them or go out and have a beer or, or whatever. But to be honest, I don't have any particular stories. And I'm not a great storyteller, so you're 0 for 2. <laughs> That's all good. Coach Terry Stotts joining us here on the Brian No Show. I wanted to try something with you, a little bit of getting to know Terry Stotts. So what I'm going to do, I call this either, neither, or both. So I'll throw out yeah. two things, and it's just like it sounds. If I said, and this isn't what I'm going to do, but as an example, if I said Burger King and McDonald's, you would either specify one of the two, either uh, neither or both. So let's do this. Okay. Camping and hiking. Hiking. Okay. I'm with you. I'm anti-camping as well. Like, I like I like a comfortable bed. Yeah, I do too. I'm totally with you on that. Hunting and fishing. Neither. Uh, I'm not much of an outdoorsman in, in that regard. I Fair do enough. like nature, but, but yeah. neither one of those. No, comfortable beds over nature. I hear you. No problem. Movies, romance or horror? Romance. Romance all day. Okay. Um, Sports, if you're just on your couch watching. NFL 
MLB. NFL. NFL. Okay. Musically, pop or heavy metal? Hmm? Pop. Pop. All right. That was a quick one right there. No love for heavy metal? Uh, yeah. Metal? No. 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 None. That's down. That's that's down way down the way down the list. R and B is R and eighties R and B is actually number one. Is it really? Okay. What are your go tos with eighties R and B? Anything. Anything. Seventies. Actually, I should say seventies and eighties R and B. That's great, Coach. Okay, so uh, if we spin it forward to the Nets, right? Blake Griffin made his debut. His first points, it was a dunk, and uh, that got a, a lot of headlines. What do you see from the Nets right now, even minus Kevin Durant? Well, it starts with James Harden. Uh, what he's doing, uh, he's playing even better than he did in Houston, which is hard to imagine. Uh, he's taking the role of uh, – you know, being the dominant ball handler, Kyrie plays off of him and everybody else plays off of him. And then, uh, you know, you get the versatility of Blake Griffin. It's going to be interesting to see how how he pans out. But they've got some good shooters. Um, they got a lot of talent. And uh, but it all starts with Harden. Obviously, Kyrie is, uh, is uh, an outstanding player as well. No doubt. All right, coach, we'll let you get to uh, your hoops watching. Really appreciate you making time, man. And good luck tomorrow night. All right. Thanks. Go Ducks. There you go. We'll catch you later. There he is, Coach Terry Stotts, Blazers head coach, joining us here on the Brian No Show.